on the News and Views Radio Network and on the Mighty 790 KFGO. He filled in uh, when we desperately needed people at times, and we called him. We pestered him at one of his busiest times. Matt, good to hear your voice again. How you doing, bud? Nice to talk to you, Joel. I had a great time when uh, during my time at KFGO. Well, you're always welcome back. You know that, right? <laughs> that Iowa That's life gets to too exciting for you. You can come back here. Occasionally it does get exciting, once every four years or, or so. Uh, are you ready for these caucuses to be over and to get your life back, Matt? <laughs> Not at all. This is, my, this is one of the reasons that I'm here. This is my favorite time. I, I love politics. When I was at Valley News Live, I covered the... Uh, the 2008 Republican uh, National Convention in Minneapolis. So this is just it's kind of in my blood to do this sort of thing. It's just it's fun. I, I remember that. I remember I was there and we'd run into each other. That was the Sarah Palin Convention. Remember how much excitement it, there was down in the Twin Cities over that convention? I do. A lot of reporters are calling uh, this an electric scene uh, in where we're doing the caucuses, where we're reporting from. Honestly, it isn't yet. It will be. But when we were at the Sarah Palin unveiling, in Minneapolis, that was electric. Yeah. <laughs> the place just erupted. Uh, no doubt about that. Tell me what the mood on the ground is in Iowa. Every national political pundit seems to be in Iowa right now. That is correct. Well, and not just national, international. I have a, a location or our station does where we do our reports from, and within oh, probably 50 feet we have reporters from BBC, Eurovision, Al Jazeera, Washington, D.C., it's just anywhere you can think of, they're all interested in it. Somehow this has become a worldwide uh, event, this first in the nation voting. Matt, it's home to you, so don't take this question the wrong way. But (laughs) I have to ask you, I mean, should Iowa have this much power? Because, And I'm not sure they do have that much power because they haven't been right about a lot of who's going to end up on the ballot. But for, for right now, as you just pointed out, the whole world is watching Iowa. That's correct. It isn't. Everyone that you that you speak with who's with the parties or, or a political organizer will say that it's not about who wins, it's about who gets momentum. So you just you really don't want to lose. And so Iowa never really claims to be the place to crown a king. It's just a place where you get to see who's really got the on-the-ground support uh, because it's the first time that you finally turn some polls into voting. And I think Iowa really is, honestly, from a personal perspective, a great place to have that begin because it, this is a place where people grown up with this in their blood as well. Uh, they know that how important their vote is, and so they pay a lot of attention. And they, when you go to these events and, and meet these candidates and hear the questions that just regular Joes, you might say, ask them, it's very, you can tell it's personal to them. So honestly, I do think it is a really good place to start this. The other thing I absolutely love about the fact that it starts in Iowa is that we mirror each other in so many ways. We're both ag-producing states. We're we're states where we share many, many common interests in terms of the issues of the day. H- has that come up? Has has ag come up a lot in these town hall meetings, and the East Coast media just hasn't covered it? <laughs> They're not as interested in especially ethanol uh, or energy, really, no, but it does come up. It comes up every single time. The governor of Iowa, you probably know this, uh, came out and gave an anti-endorsement. He won't tell anybody who to vote for, but he's saying don't vote for Ted Cruz because he is against ethanol subsidies. And so uh, that that just caused a huge uh, outcry. But I... I is that something that you heard about? Did that get yeah. outside of Iowa? Yeah, we did. Uh, and, in fact, we've been following it like everyone has, as closely as what you can, because the one thing that, that it has swept the nation is this whole Trump phenomena. You know, and, and then right. then you see on the Sunday morning shows, yesterday I saw Ted Cruz defending his position when it comes to ethanol, how he's for farmers but doesn't believe ethanol should in any way receive a subsidy. Somebody taking him to task, pointing out all the subsidies that the oil refining industry has had, and he never wanted to talk about it. So, And yet I'm seeing Ted Cruz run near the top, and people saying it's the evangelicals that are doing this. Tell me what's happening on the ground there. It's hard to tell. It's hard to pinpoint right now. We have to find out tonight what's really happening because – what you hear is that um, Ted Cruz wants to have a low voter turnout because that means that the people who are serious, the people who are into politics and, and will go caucus anyway, are there. He thinks that he has a lot of support among the traditional caucus goers. 
whereas Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, they're going to do much better if a lot of people come out, if this excitement that we see in the polls translates into the votes. And we're looking for a blizzard, so that may not be. Uh, I, I think that your caucus result is not going to be reflective of the way the polls have gone thus far. Just my personal opinion. Well, the, the the Republicans make it easier to caucus. That's fair to say. Uh, the, the Democrats, you got to go stand in a group in a circle, and then the next thing you know, you, well, this one didn't get enough, and you got to do it all over again. It's a harder job to do. The Sanders campaign clearly going out there and saying, we need huge numbers. Do you see that type of energy out of the younger Democratic voters to where Bernie Sanders could be high-fiving on his way to New Hampshire? I do. Everywhere you look, it's Sanders everywhere. So I think a lot of young people who might not have been interested and wouldn't go out and caucus tonight on a normal year are going to go, and they're not going to let a blizzard stop them. I think Sanders is going to do very well. Uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign does not appear to have the energy that, that Sanders does at all. That's interesting, because that's that's and, been reported, and you can see it at the town hall meetings, too. I mean, Sanders is just filling up the arenas. <laughs> yes, he is. And we see that, too, in our area of that we cover of Iowa. We get every single candidate through multiple times. And so we watched this process. We had Donald Trump in studio back when it was kind of seen as a joke that he was running. And he wanted to come in and talk to us in our station. And uh, and that was, he, he just had his, it was him and his security detail. And now he holds these rallies that are overflow crowds. And uh, I don't think I could get as close to him again in my life as we did that one day. And it's the same for Sanders. He came out, uh, spoke to a small group at a college a few months ago, and now he just he spoke the same night in Mason City, Iowa, that Bill Clinton did on behalf of Hillary, and it, the crowds weren't even close. Uh, Bill got a couple hundred, and Sanders had well over a thousand. You said something earlier that resonated with me, which is that Iowa doesn't necessarily pick who's going to be the final candidate on that ballot as much as what you are a good place for thinning out the ticket itself. Uh, if you had to pick, just looking at the crowds down there in Iowa, obviously the Republican side, there's only two uh, real serious candidates on the Democratic side, but on the Republican side, who walks out of tonight is the big losers? The big losers, I would say, would ironically be the last two who won in Iowa, and that is Rick Santorum and Mike Huckabee. They, uh, a story of one of our reporters tells is that he went to go talk to Rick Santorum at an event and, uh, and this was at a pizza ranch restaurant, I believe. And Mr. Santorum was going around to, talk, to try to get people interested in coming and listening to him talk. And he offered the lunch with them, and he couldn't get any to do that. They were already there, and they, they couldn't be bothered to move into another room to hear him. So I don't know where all of his energy went, but it is not in Iowa right now. Well, and, and you saw that. I mean, somebody yesterday asked me who I thought was going to be some of the biggest losers, and, and I said... Uh, look for Paul, look for Santorum, look for Huckabee. And the, the individual I was talking to said, I thought that Huckabee and Santorum were already out of the race. So they're, <laughs> they're, they're not on people's radars right now, Matt. I'm going to disagree with you about Paul. I think he's going to be one of the dark horse. He, I think he may wind up in the top half. That'd be, if, because, if he does, uh, he survives to fight till the South, if he does. Absolutely. He'll get, if he gets in the top six or so, I would predict that he'd make it at least to South Carolina and may uh, may start to catch a wave because he really does get that liberty vote, the libertarian especially, that nobody else really can. And it hasn't been a, as act of a vote as you saw with Ron Paul, but uh, it's still there. And I think so that's a group that's going to be dedicated and, and will come out tonight. Matt Bradley with KIMT TV in Iowa. Just check him out at KIMT Dot com and you can check out his work there. Matt, who's the winners? Who, uh, who wins this thing tonight on the Republican side, on the Democratic side? Oh, you're <laughs> okay. For Democrats, I'm, go I'm going to go with Bernie Sanders. And for the Republicans, I think it's, it's going to be very tight, but I honestly think it's going to go with Cruz. Really? That's I interesting. Do. I think that I think the, um, the governor's anti endorsement actually caused a lot of people to look close, more closely at Ted Cruz and uh, maybe backfiring a bit. I think he's gotten uh, a lot more serious after that.
Well, it, it was interesting to watch all the other Republican candidates focus on, and you can see their internal polling was showing a surge with Cruz as well, because they sure took him on in the last debate. They did, and you, uh, you can tell exactly what they're seeing by how they buy ads. <laughs> and yeah. they're targeting him. <laughs> yeah, we are in that business, are we not, Matt? Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Matt, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I know how busy you are today. I said I wouldn't keep you that long, but uh, do appreciate you talking to some old friends from back home. Hey, happy to join you, and uh, I may call in again. Uh, I'd love <laughs> I it. Hope I, I, I hope I don't, be, I don't end up proven wrong with my predictions. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hold you to them. So thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. <laughs> right, Ma- Matt Bradley with KAMT. Uh, TV. Uh, check him out at KAMT.com. You can see his work there and you'll see a familiar face. You know, these young, talented people get their start in TV and uh, we've used them here on the radio a number of times. The next thing you know, they're off to different markets, hitting the ball out of the park.